is just the ability yeah. to be an effective communicator, even sending an email, like how to format an email in a way that it's is true. clear, true. is accurate, oh. it doesn't waste my time, like tells me the information that I need to know. Like yeah. that's a skill you don't learn oh at film gosh. school, but being yeah. on a set, like being anywhere, just communicating in a professional, effective way, yeah. you can take your whole career up a major 100%. step. Welcome to Set Life, where we tell stories from our industry. I'm Kelly Leger, and this is Amber Buto. Hey there, and welcome to Set Life, coming from For The One Studio in Studio One. I'm Kelly Leger. And I'm Amber Buto. And today we have a very long time friend with us, my friend Lane McCall. Welcome. Thanks. Glad to be here. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start out the episode saying I'm just going to be like a, you know, chime in occasionally. These guys have known each other for over 20 years. Yeah, over 20, 20 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Long, time. Long time. Like in the starting days of the two of you <laughs> dreaming up some fun projects to work together, I've heard. Uh, and yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we're in for uh, yeah. some really good stories today. Messing I feel like. up a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Learning from a lot of mistakes, mm -hmm. you know, stuff, stuff like that. All right, so. So people have a, a, a grid here. First of all, just tell them who Lane McCall is, what you do, you have a company. Well, you just give us a little quick overview. Sure, so now, um, so I've been in production about, oh, 24 years. Okay. And uh, I have a production company called Bad Colors. And so I work as a director, DP, producer, you wear all the hats, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and we do uh, productions for do from large scale commercial productions down to product videos that live on Amazon and everything kind of in between. Like the production world is just always kind of all over the place. Uh, I've done a lot of TV over the years, like documentary style television. Um, and so, yeah, we stay pretty busy. We're based here in Houston and um, I still like it. You know, I've been doing a long time. <laughs> that and says it's something. It's creative. It's that like, says something. Yeah. Definitely says something. Yeah. Cool. It's, it's been great. And I got my start working with <laughs> this guy, that's, Kelly. That's oh yeah, true. years ago. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. We were out in. <laughs> Go ahead. Just know this is going to be good. Yeah. This is going to be yeah. good. Yeah, we were living both living in Tampa, Florida. Yep. And we were working at a uh, a youth ministry, and um, they wanted to do a TV program, and. We had never done that. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we went in, they're like, can you do that? And we like, yeah. yeah of course we can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. Can, we can do that. And so we come back, and there's like a room full of equipment in the boxes still. And they're like, all right, great. Make us a show. And we're oh, like, uh, crickets. My gosh. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> And, uh, and so we did, though. We made it. The thing is, that was like before, like nowadays when people are getting involved in production, you have YouTube. Like you yeah. can learn almost anything instantly. Yep. But when we were doing this, like it was mini DV tapes. Yep. It was, <laughs> you know, big cameras that you still put on your shoulder with yep. like ENG style lenses, hot lights. You had to yep. wear gloves. Yep. Hot lights. Yeah. What are those? Yeah. Yeah. Like, but, uh, and we didn't know what we were doing. We yep. didn't know how to edit. Yeah. <laughs> I was we on, didn't. I was on the phone with tech support initially 20, 30 times a day. Because yeah, you couldn't yeah, go anywhere right. and figure it out. You're looking in the book, and it's like, what's a timeline? What's a what's? Yeah. A, I don't know what any of this stuff is. Yeah. So I'm calling them. Like after week two, they're like, Oh, hi, Kelly. Yeah. Like, they knew the area code. They're like, Hi, Kelly. You know. And <laughs> like true. over time, though, I'd call them less and less. Yeah. And they were like, tech support was literally our our school, film school for for editorial. And we yeah. Learned a lot. A lot of made a lot of mistakes. I was we were talking earlier. I lost entire TV shows. Like, because I didn't know how to connect the media or I'd delete things I didn't know I was oh, supposed to. And we'd have to go gosh. and reshoot. Yeah. I mean, it was just, we did eventually create a few shows. Yeah, we did. I think we ended up with four <laughs> half hour shows. <laughs> And it took us probably a year and a half to do that. This is, this is what I meant. This was going to be good. This yeah. was going to be It took good. us a year and a half to do four 30-minute yep. shows. They yeah. were ambitious, though, they like were. for what we were doing. They were, they were very ambitious. That's right. Went to a lot of locations, just oh, yeah. figured stuff out, I interviewed mean, people. Can you imagine if somebody like came to us now with the same idea? Okay, we're going to shoot on the top of this building to start, and then we're going to go to the beach, <laughs> yeah. and then we're going to do this, and yeah. we're like, 
bro. I'm like, we try to talk him out of it. We're yeah. like, are you kidding me? That's a lot of moves. You know how much yeah. that's going to cost. I know. We're just like, no, nah, we just came up with stuff and just yeah. went and shot it. And it worked though. It and didn't. and it, what I remember when you were talking about putting it on TV, I think you were, your original, because you started before I came on. Yeah. I think you were halfway into episode yeah, one or right, had right, one done right. or something. But uh, weren't you going to public access with it? And then they, the, the station yeah. was like, no, 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 this is too good. We want to yeah. put this on the regular. That's right network that's right on the station that's right yeah, yeah. It, that's what happened and then we got to the regular network and then we really found out how much we didn't know i thought like <laughs> see all these sound levels yeah you have to go through <laughs> you got to go through, through the entire show right and make sure they're all in this range yeah. it's like oh. yeah oh, you know we didn't i didn't know we didn't know yeah, yeah. so they helped us man we were, people were gracious and, yeah you know, for sure now they'd be like oh yeah just go look it up kid you know look it up on youtube you learn yeah. it in five minutes now figure, figure it out yeah, yeah and if you didn't have it now they wouldn't even take it right yeah, i mean it's true. like oh, yeah. there wasn't yeah. the grace at that level no, no. you know i mean the, yeah. the grace that they had then they don't have now because all of those things are available right. and you, you know there's so many yeah so many right. people learning and so it's just raised the bar of the quality of what we're putting out to yeah. and expertise levels and just all of that but i mean what a great authentic story in my opinion for people that are out there that are trying to learn and, and dive into this of just having the the courage yeah. right to say yes to like i have no idea but yes right i'm gonna figure it out that in itself is part of the creative process absolutely you don't know opinion. what you don't know and it's yes. like kind of oh, a good thing it's true because yeah. you if you just have the desire to do something you just yes. dive in like i don't yes. know how hard this is going to be but if you have the interest and the passion in your heart yeah. for it you're just kind of gonna keep going yeah that's true yeah yeah we are so stupid I mean, I'm like, you know, it was courageous, but yeah. when you're young, you have that natural courageous, stupid yeah. courageous. It's true. You know, yeah. and it was like, I'm so glad that we did, though. Yeah. And like, right. Oh and gosh. so so then that's what you say, like, really, how stupid was it? Because what you learned from that mm -hmm. was immeasurable. Right. Yeah. You know, and look at both of your careers now and what all you've done. And so it's it's at some point, I think it takes that level of I'm going to jump. Yeah, if, if you're trying to be a perfectionist at anything you're doing, starting is not where you find perfection. First Absolutely. of all, you can't be perfect, but you can uh, try to achieve excellence. Yes. And you don't get to excellent unless you've been trying it. That's yeah. true. So, you know, in fact, you know, here's what I remember. So I, you know, we were doing all that. You had already been to school, film school at right. that point, right? Yeah. And um, were you, you were in, were you actually in New York and? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was in acting school for two years in right, New York. Right. And then when acting was done, it was like, what do I do? Start auditioning? And I didn't want to. Right. And then I saw this thing for a film program, right. New York Film Academy. Right. So I did like this summer intensive. Right. And day one, they're handing you a 16 millimeter film camera and you're out in Union Square yes. shooting on film. That was amazing. That day one, I was like, ooh. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't do that until after right we'd made all those like mistakes he'd yeah. already you know learned some stuff and i but i mean i so at, you know at that point you had to be really hungry to learn mm -hmm. but you yeah. had to and go figure it out so like i don't know how it was for you but i was like dvds right dvds were a big thing behind the scenes on any dvds right. we were just lapping it up because yeah. it's the that was your access to that world yeah you, that was you had that's how you got on set yeah. You're watching behind the scenes DVDs. So I would just, everything I could figure out, how do you do this? What's the process? The, everything yeah. I could possibly learn. And then when you make a ton of mistakes trying to do it all yourself. Yeah. And then he's telling me about this school. And so I leave that job and go to same, the same film school. Yeah. And I had the exact same experience. Mm. Day one, you have a 16 millimeter film camera in Union Square in New York, and mm. you are shooting. Mm -hmm. It was like hands on. And it's like, yeah. you know, if you were to go to like, I don't know, if you went, I mean, awesome to go to you know full-on film school get a degree and all that but you know you're not going to touch a camera right for yeah. a year or two it's yeah. going to be a lot of theory and yeah. a lot of cool stuff you learn but the practicals yeah you're not going to you're not going to do that yeah I was like so stoked we got to do that right out of the gate it was amazing i think i've i've uh i think you could go both ways but i had a friend that went to a four-year film school after the new york film academy mm -hmm. And he went on and he's got a great career at Netflix now. He makes like the wow. intros for their major shows. Like wow. he's a, a VFX director and he directs these things. I'm like, oh, that's an interesting yeah. path. <laughs> but he went to a four year film school. After a four year that. film school. But I think it's what you want and sure. what, what yeah. fits with you. Like yeah. I love that's the hands on good. stuff. Yeah. And to this day, like those behind the scenes stuff, I still, whenever I see behind the scenes, I'm I still know. like, wait, how are they yeah. doing that? Because yeah. there's not one way to do it's things. True. 
And I, th I feel like in my career, I've kind of come along figuring a lot of stuff out on my own because just my personality, I don't love working for other people all the time. Uh -huh. I like kind of Mm -hmm. uh, setting the atmosphere myself yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And so, yeah, I've made a lot of mistakes, but then you kind of fig figure out ways that work for you. Yeah. And, and we're not in Hollywood. Like I'm not right. in Hollywood, so I don't have to do it by this system. Right. So I do end up wearing a lot of hats on certain projects, but maybe that lets us be a little more aggressive on pricing mm -hmm. or lets us work a little faster or mm -hmm. whatever. And if yeah. it works for us, cool. But then yep. you learn, Oh yeah, it's nice to have a gaffer. Oh yeah, it's nice to have a gaffer. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. So yes. those things come along, but you kind of develop your own style and your it's way of working. True. And to me, I think the whole thing's atmosphere. Right. Like who you have on set, Huge. who you work yep. with. Huge. Like yeah. I don't care if they're a pro necessarily. I care about their attitude more than that. If they're yeah. like a jerk face. No thanks. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. We're the yeah. same way. That's yeah. the, that whole yeah. collaborative thing. But that's the beauty in this industry and in also our businesses. Again, the creative process is still creating the business because yeah. it, you're making it, you're taking in the information and then you're saying, how do I make this like customized to us? Mm -hmm. What we do, what is our flavor, mm -hmm. what is our vibe? You know, it's like, when I'm looking at shows that we're creating and things that we're doing, it's like you can tell it's a for the one because it's kind of got our touch on it, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. And that's what you start to define as yeah. a business in this industry. It's kind of like, what is what is your vibe? What is your tone? What's your flavor? And when you come here, you should get that same feel. Yes. You know, when you're sitting okay. on our sets, when you're around, you kind of get that and same you, level. You know, what Absolutely. you're describing too, and I suspect Lane's productions and his sets are the same way. Like when I when I was in California all those years um, and I had my my producing partner out there, we knew that if we got on set just one time mm -hmm. with our clients and they had shot with other people before that we would have them for life mm. because our environment, our atmosphere was mm. so different. Right. They would they would love it. We'd get the we'd get the same quality or better than anybody else who was shooting for them. And they would love the process. Right. I mean, yeah. production's already grueling. It's yeah. already a thing. Why have to like do it with people that are miserable or unhappy or whatever? I mean, I'd literally have, I'd got to working with the same crew so much of the time that if we had to bring in somebody, we had a, a you know, a new AD or whatever the case may be. And, um, you know, they weren't gelling with us or they were a complainer or they're whatever. Mm. I'm like, my crew didn't even have to say anything. Like, we, they're like, Kelly, he won't be here tomorrow. We know. Wow. You know, and yeah. it was just because yeah. it was, you're messing up. Like, this yeah. is our lives. This is what we do. And it's like, I don't want, you don't have, you don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, and when you work in the right and left side of the brain, right, there's two mm. different styles. There's two different ways or two different flows. You go and put somebody that's a right brain into, let's say, an accounting firm. They're like, get them to stop talking, sit down. <laughs> Why have they asked me for more coffee? <laughs> what are they doing over there with the door handle? Why are they tapping? You know I mean? Like yeah. it's just, it yes. messes up the whole workflow. Yeah. Yes. You know I mean? They yeah. need head down, lock numbers locked in, right. organization, quiet. Those. Come to a creative space. There's like 10,000 things going on. Everybody's <laughs> laughing and talking, but that gets the best out of both worlds. That creative needs all that stimulation, needs all that creativity fostering, you know, and those that crunch numbers and do different things need kind of that quiet. Sure. So it's finding, that's why it's so yeah. important why we all say we can't have the one person that's annoying everybody because we need everybody clicking sure. on all cylinders, creating what they're supposed to be creating. Yeah, so true. it just yeah. kind of flows and works it's in all environments and ours just happens to be that creative environment we talk about that i'm sure you understand it and you as running a business you've got to go sit in both boxes you've got to go sit in that quiet box crunch numbers look at things do bids run the business and then you know when you that's what i say that, that we have a door here that crosses into the threshold into these stages and i'm like remind myself this is where the magic happens hey Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, sure. when I try to bring that intensity into here, it does. It kind of gets everybody like, mm. uh oh, the boss is on set. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, it changes, changes the vibe yes. of everything. Oh. And that's just something that I've tried to pay attention to more and learn more as, you know, an owner of the studio and, and working on both sides, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm, mm. I'm sure that's been a part of your process too and your company's vibe and how it's it very works. true that's what directing's like directing mm -hmm. is living in both worlds because mm -hmm. you have to mm -hmm. 
and it's good to have a good producer, but like you need to stay on schedule, you need to accomplish what you need to accomplish, you need to make yeah. sure you know, your T's are crossed and your I's are dotted, but yeah. you need to be free and create an environment that's that's fun for like, especially talent on yeah. camera. Like they have to have this uh, ability to be expressive and mm -hmm. creative and yeah. feel comfortable. And the whole crew, everyone wants to work in this nice environment. So it is kind of living in both spaces, yeah. but I kind of prefer living in the creative space. So like, hey, we're on set, let's have fun. So it's nice to have a producer that's like, hey, let's stay on schedule. Yeah, I like that part too. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. the, and, you, and you touched on something with the acting, because I know you have a history there. And, yeah. you know, you have, I know you enjoy working with actors. Very and nice. tell me about, tell me about some of that, like how you got yeah. started with that, how you work with them, even process, whatever, you know, just. For sure. Well, I went to uh, acting school for a couple of years in New York, as I mentioned, and I fell in love with the process and the, the psychology of acting, like how to mm -hmm. get into a role, how to approach a role or whatever. And then when I got behind the camera, I really just fell in love with that. I was like, okay. But now I love working with actors because I love still being involved in that process. And I think it's kind of an instinctual thing. Like, I don't know how other directors work, but when you're working with a talent, and we do a lot of like, um, like spokesperson type stuff too for corporate stuff or whatever. And a lot of times you're working with people that aren't necessarily professionals or they're not like we're doing a, a stuff for a, a large company now where they wanted to use their own employees that appear on camera. But so how do you get them to a place where they feel comfortable, they feel relaxed and they deliver what you have in mind? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a little bit of like, OK, great. But now try using your hands and just one little tweak like that can make the difference between a stiff, yeah. stale performance yeah. versus a relaxed, yes. you know, engaging performance. Totally. And it is sort of like just figuring out how to work with people, um, seeing what pushes someone's buttons versus someone else's and trying to coach them to a place and working with them to get as close as you can to what you're envisioning. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes you can't even get there all the way. People get burned out after like, We've been doing this one line for 20 minutes. Okay. Okay. Well, what am I doing wrong? And they get in their head. So you're like, okay. It's true. So it's walking that fine line. But it is a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I'm thinking about like, you know, you have, you have, you know, done the, done the acting thing. You've edited. I know you know music. Mm -hmm. um, how is that like, how does that help you like in that as a director, producer, whatever, in that process to have like touched on all those things because yeah. as you're working it you can see the forest for the tree i mean you, yeah. you know you have a, you can have the thirty thousand foot view yeah you know, all, has that uh, that helped you with, with i've liked it you probably had the same experience but yeah. isn't it nice to to know almost every area mm -hmm. of production mm -hmm. and and i feel like that allows me to make sure that every area has excellence involved, yeah. just like you're talking about with yeah. your, like creating the studio. Like you yeah. just walk in here and there's excellence everywhere. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And it's the same thing. Like you just wanna make sure, I don't wanna overstep someone and like do their job for them or, or micromanage, yeah. but I know if we're missing something or, right. no, mm -hmm. and, and you kind of have to be the CEO of a production. Like when you're running something, when you're in charge of it, it's like you just wanna make sure that it, it it's beautiful. Yeah. And so it's nice to have all that experience and have been doing it so long. Totally. But sometimes you get talking to people and you're like, I sound pretty smart. Like, I feel like I, I know things. Like, you don't even realize what you've experienced or know until you yeah. pops up. It's so true. it's neat just kind of, it's the same thing, though. Like, we were back in the day learning, like, you're on tech support. But those lessons you learn from tech yeah. support like you still have that it's knowledge true. today because you've it's gone through true. that experience it's and true. you kind of can't replace that right yeah having experience because it helps yep. you know like yep. on a production day you know um where you can okay like this is going too long here well i know yeah. i can save it here in post right. or i know that i can, yeah i can save it here on the schedule because yes. i produce produced this i know how to yeah. it helps you, you very know much. i mean like communicate mm -hmm. and, you know to be able to do all those things well yeah. that man that's it's invaluable. It's invaluable. It, it is. You know what I think the biggest thing that they don't really teach you in film school, but the, the biggest element that I even try to share with young people now, but to be a good producer, director, DP. What do, you, what do you mean young people? Like we, we're not young we're, people? Bro, we're not young anymore, Kelly. <laughs> this, uh, we've passed that. This thing. is news to him. News flash. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is a big news flash for Kelly. Now, but yeah. Yeah, this is, I'm in about? the same boat. <laughs> but um, it's communication is just the ability yeah. to be an effective communicator, even sending an email, like how to format an email in a way that it's is true. clear, true. is accurate, oh. it doesn't waste my time, like tells me the information that I need to know. Like yeah. that's a skill you don't learn in oh film gosh. school, but 
being yeah. on a set, like being anywhere, just communicating in a professional, effective way. Yeah. She can take your whole career up a major 100%. step. Yeah. But I also would think think that that is forward thinking. Mm. Well, I, that's like a rare bird these mm. days if you can find a young kid that can do some forward yeah. thinking. Right. You know, um, and that is clear communication. So, like, if somebody reaches out to the studio or whatever, it's like, uh, can we book it? And I'm like, what is it? <laughs> yeah. What are we booking? So true. Yeah. Oh, well, it's a podcast. Like an audio podcast, a video, video podcast. podcast. Yeah. How many cameras? How, many? How long? So, yeah. What's the day? What's the, I mean, you know. Totally. Oh, so true. And it's just question, after, you know, it's just like, I had to know all of this. Yes, that's right. To say yes to this yeah. or to quote it or to whatever, you know what I mean? Or, um, you know, okay, I'll get lunch. Well, what time? Right. <laughs> when will you be here? Right. How far in advance are you picking right. that up? Have you called and ordered before? Like that forward thinking, thinking through something yeah. all the way yeah. instead of just like checked off a box yeah. Yeah. kind of thing. And that's communicating and teaching and developing those skills to say, okay, think of something that you think I might need right. before mm -hmm. I know I need it mm -hmm. kind of thing. You, you know, know, some it, it's a it's actually something. So we do a lot of missions work overseas mm. right and it's something we run into commonly in like really undereducated areas and we're always you know kind of bumping each other and like it's the critical thinking part mm. you know like it, it could be as simple as you're trying to get seven pieces of luggage in the back of a vehicle mm -hmm. we look at yeah. all the seven pieces of luggage we look at the size of the vehicle you're already thinking about how that's going to go or not go or yeah. how you're going to put it in. But the, the non-critical thinker doesn't think about that. No. They just start throwing it in. And you're like, nope, you that's, saw it from the very, yeah. that's never going to, that's right. not what it, and it was the critical thinking part of it. I heard someone say before, you know, you could be Einstein, but if you can't clearly communicate that which you do know, mm. you're no different than the village idiot. Right. Yeah. Because it's all there, but you can't give it to anybody. You can't share it with anybody. Yeah. Like that, like what you're saying, what your guys are talking about is, mega huge on a yeah. production if the director can't get that thing from right here mm -hmm. and to every department it's, it's not gonna it's not gonna work out you're yeah. totally right and what a relief to walk over to a department like i we just shot a big uh, thing on a white psych actually and um we had a teleprompter and i had my son who's 18 running the teleprompter and but just to go over to him and say hey you know which script we're on yet next yeah dad we're on this script and this section and i'm like Thank you for thinking of that. Yes. Right? Not just because he's my son, but it's like, yeah. thank you for overthinking a little bit, thinking yes. ahead, yeah. knowing so yeah. I don't have to come across and tell you, hey, we're about to do this. Yes. It's just, no, you're carrying some of the burden, some of the weight Love off it. of you're my shoulder. You're taking ownership of your task. Yes. And that's, that's the thing that I think oh. is what we're trying to teach and develop is 100%. take ownership of whatever you've been given. I don't yeah. care if it's painting the floor. Take yeah. ownership of painting the floor. Think, this paint cost X amount of dollars. I should not probably waste it, spend it on something else. Like, think about the whole thing. If you are going to buy this paint, if you are gonna use the mm -hmm. roller after the roll, I mean, it's to the simplest task, Absolutely. in my opinion. If you can take ownership of it and think through those things fully, yeah, you're in. You've created yourself a job wherever you go. Absolutely, because you're, you're you you start to become irreplaceable yeah. because you've taken off my out of my brain to come and sit with you and teach you all these things, or go back and do it after you again. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's thinking of how do we how do we cultivate that culture? How do we show that as an example? Yeah. How do we teach that? And then looking for that in other people. I mean, I do all kinds of interviews all the time and I ask them questions to just say, you know, like we were doing interviews. I did, I, I don't even know how many interviews. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder which one is going to follow up right away with an email saying, thank you for your time mm -hmm. and your consideration. Mm -hmm. I really am looking forward. Like there's a passion, there's a desire, there's a follow through, there's a connect, there's a, that alone totally. yes. is, I'm like, okay, hey, yours just moved to here. Yep. Very much. You yep. know, yeah. I mean, I got one. Mm. Wow. One. Mm. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So I'm like. And I've always, I mean, I've always thought of it. I mean, in my brain, when you're talking, I'm thinking about, you know, the difference between an owner and an employee, right? You know, you're always trying, every owner is trying to find somebody who would run the business like they would and put as much yeah. passion and care in it as they would, all yeah. those things. It's almost like we got to have training for everybody on 
owner thinking. Right. Even as an employee, like I mean, that's you're never going to be an owner if you don't have the thinking. Yeah. And it's got to start yeah. somewhere. Yeah. But like that's that's huge. But they're all desire. The start desire is, I want to own my own studio. Right. You right. know. Right. And I'm like, I think you like the idea. <laughs> Right. I think you like the idea of being the director That's on it. that film. Like I think you idea. like the idea of being the lead actor. I don't think you actually want the responsibility, responsibility. and the work of those top roles. That's it. Yeah. You know, so true. because they are a consuming thing. You know, the, the amount of detail, work ethic, time, dedication that goes into doing those things to get to those levels totally. um, are, are different than the... Uh, big dream, which I'm all about dreams. I yeah. think you should dream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll never get there unless you think forward to it, but you're definitely not going to get there if you don't put the rubber to the road. That's neither. true. That's I've, true. I've found, I don't know if you, you all have found this, but like I find myself directing a ton like, and I have for years, but I never, I was always willing, but I never was chasing it. I was never like, I need to be a director. It was more about, I, I want to be involved in production. But almost out of necessity, mm. I would end up directing because yeah. mm -hmm. who else is going to do it? Right. You know, and it's it's just been a very natural progression. And anything in my life personally that has really happened has always been that sort of natural progression of. Yeah. So it's like you're saying, like, oh, I dream to have a studio. Well, a dream is like out here. But if you're actually just involved in the process of it, it's almost something that you for lack of a better term, give birth to like yes. very organically, very naturally. Yeah. It just comes out of you. And maybe you've had that dream, but it's more about the day to day. What am I yes. doing today? Yes. What am I, how yeah. can I just keep moving forward? And yeah. I don't know where I'm going to end up exactly, but let's just keep doing this. And so here I am now, I find myself directing for very large brands and I never was like, please, please like let yes. me direct. It was never that. Yeah. Right. It just, right. just kind of end up there. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's yeah. very simple organic process yeah you have to put into action what you're dreaming towards it's like the other day i was around here and it's t i was saying okay um so i want to stage five times this size and yeah. we've outgrown the building and all this and i'm dreaming this big new sound stage and everybody's around here and i go that was a dream today. I'm going to go sit in the office and I'm going to do today. <laughs> yeah, you know, right I mean, it was just yeah. like, I'm going to know, go do uh, exactly. I'm going to answer all my emails and yeah. I'm going to handle the projects that I have now. And right. so I think it's good to speak those dreams, but like you're saying, naturally, you just got to start doing it, yep. you mm -hmm. know, Absolutely. to work towards it. That's true. And know, it, but it helps so. you on the day to day with your course correction. If you mm -hmm. have that out there, you know, like at least I'm going this, yeah. this away. I'm not going there today, but I'm going that direction yeah. today. So listen, yeah. I want to hear about what, um, what are you doing right now? Like, what are you working on? Any, anything? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, very exciting. Filming a birthday party tomorrow. Hey, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Listen, we don't do birthday parties. <laughs> uh, nothing wrong with that, but no, I've never done it. Never done a wedding either. Actually. Whoa. Wow. Never filmed a wedding. Lucky you. Yeah. Wow. I know. <laughs> No, you did that for a while. Uh, yeah. Uh, we, we have um, uh, very, some some large clients we're doing a um, lot of videos for. We're about to deliver 88 videos wow. for one client. Oh, my And then gosh. it'll be another 350 or so over the course of the year. They're not all individual videos. They have, like, different components to them. So, so that's interesting. Um, we have, um, you know, just a lot of kind of ongoing projects like that happening. Um, uh, it's always different. You get a call, you get an email, you're like, yeah. hey, can you go? Like I was telling you a few minutes ago, I did a bunch of traveling in 2021. Like I traveled all over the country, like for a shooting for Indeed. Like we did white sykes all over the country, like interviewing wow. people. And so it was just a DP going mm -hmm. around, like mm -hmm. lighting sets and stuff. And it was a lot of fun. But then when that project's over, you're like, oh, it's different now. So it's just always right. this ebb and flow. Right. But it's it's fun. It's great. And um, yeah, it's kind of about just moving forward. I'm excited about... Uh, we see AI coming in yeah. a, a lot, which I find super interesting. Mm -hmm. Like it really helps with script writing mm -hmm. and shot lists and just doing a lot of the thinking for you wow. that if you know how to do it, cool. Yeah. But man, it's a time saver. Wow. And I'm just anticipating the next couple of years. That's interesting where that's going to go. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to take over color grading personally. Wow. That's right. Because, you know, color grading is all numbers. Like you can dial in the skin tone, dial in exposure yeah. levels. But man, I think... Wow. Within a couple of years, I think we're going to see some shifts. So the learning curve is going to get a little bit less. You're going to be a little yeah. bit quicker. So it's really going to come down to more of your taste, your artistic vision, mm -hmm. and getting more efficient, 
probably yeah. smaller, mm -hmm. smaller crews, smaller teams. Yeah, it's happened. And uh, yeah, that's where we are, but I find it super interesting and see where it goes. I think it's interesting because AI is a huge topic, right? Mm. I mean, that's the, everybody's on the forefront of everybody's mind. But I am 100% in agreement with you. The fact that AI is going to help in a lot, a lot of ways. If you know the industry well, if you know it well, AI can work for you really well. Yes. Because you take that baseline of AI and now you can just tweak it through, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you don't know, AI can mess your stuff up royally because sure. you don't know where, like, that's never going to work. Right. Like, we've got to put in some emotion here. We've got to put in this little tweak here yes. for it to not look like AI. Right. Yes. right. Or you're just right. developing a whole bunch of AI, right? right? And everybody's, soon everybody's going to know exactly what that looks like. Right, right. You know, when right. it first came out, everybody was like, whoa, whoa. But now you start hearing going, that's AI, that's AI, yes. that's it. And then that's going to get overdone. People aren't going to want just AI anymore. They're going to want the flavor of creativity and sure, all of that. Sure. So I, I am agreeing with you. Like yep. AI yeah. works for those who really, really know because yeah, you can take yeah. the baseline. Yeah. It saves time, yes. cuts out a job, which is terrible. But at the same time, if you're running a company, you know, you're trying to mainstream and get things cost effective to stay relevant with the industry, relevant where times are taking us, and then you're able to go, yeah, but we've got to tweak this. Yep. So yeah. I think it will create different jobs too. Yep. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's the uh, evolution of business. I want to like totally industry. jump into that topic right now, but we are out of time. Yes, I know. <laughs> and so, okay, how do people find you? How do people hire you? Great DP, great, great, great director, great production company in Texas or anywhere. So how do they find you? Yeah. Sure. Our website is just badcolors.com. Badcolors.com. Badcolors. Yeah, and the B's scribbled out, so it's not really bad. It's like ad colors. Hey. Yeah, I, I had, a, had a dream did. like five minutes before I woke up, and I saw the logo like this several years ago. I was like, what is that? And I went, and I looked, and the domain was available. I was like, okay, I'm changing my production company name to that. Bad That's colors. awesome. Bad, bad, yeah. bad colors. Bad colors. Instagram, yeah. same thing. Social yeah, media. Yeah, I, I don't really do much Instagram. Just That's kidding. Just LinkedIn. Lane Matthew McCall on Instagram. You can follow me there. Okay. LinkedIn, you can look me up, Lane McCall. But yeah, Bad Colors is the way to contact us and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Well, man, yeah. it's been fun. I need to do like four more episodes with you. I know, right? Yeah. And um, But we're out of time. I'm Kelly Leger. And I'm Amber Buto. And this is Set Life. We will see you next time.